Hello again boys. I was hoping you'd still be here after my little dip in the pool. I'd like to continue our chat on NoSQL databases. So what can you tell me about the specific technologies and protocols that make up NoSQL? Why is NoSQL so great? Well, I guess you'd like to hear a bit about JSON, REST, and why protocols then. Don't forget No.js. Whoa. Slow down fellas. Can you break those down a bit for me? Sure. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation and was invented by a chappie named Douglas Crockford. It's basically a very succinct way of describing an object. It's very widely used outside of JavaScript. I see. REST stands for Representational State Transfer and was defined by Roy Fielding. Essentially this describes the key element of HTTP you know, get, put, post, delete and is stateless. REST is used in some NoSQL databases, whereas others use HTTP. Okay. Now you also mentioned wire protocols. What's a wire protocol? I did indeed. Wire protocols are typically simple TCP based protocols for those basic primitive actions. They are easy to author client interfaces. Thanks for that. Now I think the last thing you mentioned was nodeless. No. It's node.js, not nodeless. This is basically server-side JavaScript, and is based on Google's V9 engine, so it's pretty beefy and features a synchronous event loop, non-blocking IOs and JavaScript closures and callbacks. It's very fast and highly scalable which is why it has a rapidly growing number of front-end clients and back-end interfaces to no SQL databases. Well, you guys really seem to know your stuff. That's a lot to take in. Now something that I hear when discussing databases is memory and storage, sharding, in memory versus on disk or something. Can you elaborate on this for me? Sure. Let's discuss Memcached and Redis as examples. Both of these have numerous clients available and use simple TCP based wire protocol. The main difference between the two is that Memcached is high performance in memory key value store, and Redis, which was adapted from Memcached, is a key value database which actually writes to memory and occasionally committed to disk by background daemon. So no SQL databases are Memcached or Redis. What's this sharding term I've heard about? Sharding is in NoSQL. It is basically where you take a big database and break it up into smaller databases and spread them across different servers. Now SQL databases need very clean and sanitized data. The data has to be assembled, usually using joins, if you'd like to give the whole picture. No SQL databases can work with just the pieces, shards. It needs to handle the operation in question. So what you are basically saying, is that SQL needs all the data puzzle pieces put in place, before it can perform any task, whereas no SQL can work with just the puzzle pieces required for, say, the corner you're interested in. Exactly. I see. So does this affect the system speed at all? An excellent question, you are beginning to understand. Yes, since the NoSQL doesn't need all the puzzle pieces in place it is faster. It's a bit like the analogy of the free climber versus the regimented climber. The free climber, not weighed down by unessential items, can scale the mountain faster. Got it. Yes, I believe the puzzle pieces for SQL and NoSQL are beginning to fall into place for me. Mind you, I am a bit confused still. With no SQL, if I've got all this data in shards across various systems, and not all the data is written to disk immediately, how does the data stay correct, and not get mangled? I think she's asking about CAP, ACID and BASE. What do you reckon? Is she ready for it? Yes, let's go for it. After all, without discussing them, it's hard to appreciate the whole picture, and understand the differences between SQL and no SQL systems. Okay guys, you just lost me. 
caps, acids, bases. Are we talking databases here, or chemistry? No don't worry. We'll explain, as it is the core for SQL databases, and it stands for atomicity. A transaction is all or nothing. Consistency. Only valid data is written to the database. Isolation. Cannot access data in mid-transaction, in order to keep integrity. Durability. Recovery from any system failure, such as write-ahead logs and so on. Okay, that sounds all pretty good to me. Yes, but the problem with an ACID type system is that it tries to do too much, and so has problems with scalability including network failures and delays. Also multiple nodes are required to handle machine failure. In essence, very large systems can't be ACID. Oh so what's the alternative then, is that CAP? CAP stands for consistency. Where data is always correct across all nodes. Availability. In the event of individual node failures, survivors continue to operate. Petition tolerance. After individual node failure the system continues to operate, and become consistent when back online. So that sounds better. Is that the NoSQL way then? Well, the NoSQL guys have taken CAP one step further and used BASE. This stands for, basically available. System works adequately the whole time. Soft state. The system doesn't have to be consistent the whole time. Eventual consistency. It all catches up with itself, and becomes consistent sometime later. So with no SQL systems which use base, it all works out in the end, so to speak. She's got it. By Jeff, she's got it. Exactly. So in summary, from all the bits you've told me now, and earlier no SQL systems scale very easily making them ideal for large web scale systems, as they use sharding, don't actually write anything immediately, only put the relevant puzzle pieces together that are needed and use base, these systems are robust, fast, and scalable. Yes. And if no SQL systems using base are good enough for Google, Amazon, Facebook and eBay, I imagine there will be a bright future for no SQL systems. I am feeling hot again, and need another swim. Thanks for your help. I'll be back. Thank <laughs> you.